So someone help me out. What did you get for your total cost uh, of the 3%? The, the okay, so $151,776. And how about 5%? Good. Okay, so those are the same as your answers then for um, A and B. They're on number one. So then how much more does the 5% mortgage cost over the 30 years than the 3%? How can we find that? Subtraction. Yep, just subtract B and A and B. Mm-hmm. So if I subtract that, then I got 41,479.20. Anyone agree? Please tell me if that's not what you got, because who knows? Okay, wonderful. So that was a 2% higher interest rate. Did that result? in a 2% increase on the 100,000. So what would 2% of 100,000 be? What would 2% of 100,000 be? Two. Okay, 2,000, two right? Because 2% 2 of 100 is two. <laughs> so 2% 2 of 100,000 would be 2,000. So did it on, was it only 2,000 more? No, no. no. Um, so 2% so of 100,000 would only be 2,000. So it is much more than 2%. What percent, if I did this, of 100,000, so much more than 2%. And if I even figured out, didn't ask us specifically to figure this out, but if this out of 100,000, now because of the 100, we could really just move our decimal, right? We could just say this would be like 41, a little, over, it would be over 41%, right? Because if I divide this, I mean, but that's where things are going to land since it's a nice 100,000. So it's over 41%. Why, why isn't it just 2% difference? I mean, it was 3% and 5%. Where does all this extra come from? Because exponentially, right? Because it's not just one year, right? We're not just looking at one year. We're looking at over 30 years. So over 30 years, that, and it keeps compounding, but we're also paying it off. So it's not like 2 times 30, oh, it's going to be 60% more. But so sometimes when people, that, like, oh, that was, the bank said they could get me 4%, and someone's saying, I think you, I think you could, maybe if you try this place, I think you could get 3.5. And they're like, well, it's not a big deal. It's not that big a deal. 5% doesn't sound bad, but then when we see like, oh, over the course of the loan, $41,000 more in interest is a lot of, I mean, to me, maybe not to you guys, but to most of us, I think we would all agree that that is a substantial amount. So now even a half a percent makes a difference, and obviously not as much of a difference, but will make a diff more difference than what we realize, especially over the course of that much time. Mm -hmm. Right. So I can do the 115,900 times 0.2. Um, if you like, um, if you prefer the proportion, you could do X out of the down payment over the price 
is 20 over 100. Either way, we should get $23,180. And even another way is because 20% is the same as one-fifth, we could just divide 115,900 by five. So that would be how much money he needs to pay for a down payment. So if that's his down payment, how much money will he need to borrow? How much money will he be mortgaging? We just subtract, correct, yes. So how much is that when we subtract? And we have two different very valid ways to get there. We can simply subtract, right, if this is his down payment, this is what's left, um, or the other 80%, right? So we could do 80%. If we did times 0.8, we should get the same, right? We could get the same. Now, this kind of simplifies things a bit because there are also closing costs and fees and you either have to finance that or you have to have more money at the beginning in addition to that down payment. But just keeping things at least a certain amount there. I also find it interesting to think that amortization and for that matter the word mortgage like means to death. <laughs> it's like we're think they're thinking of like the debts being killed. Um, so I guess that, like, the morgue, like a mortician, so those things come from the same word. Thank you, sir. So now, if we want to find what his um, monthly payment will be, and we see here, this is his interest rate, 3.75%, um, and he's going to do it for 20 years. This is our formula. By the way, this formula, or this is the format for the formula, this formula is um, on your reference page. Okay, so this formula is on the reference page that's already on there, um, along with uh, lots of other things. Um, and so in this case, what did it tell us? His so his monthly interest rate, his annual percentage rate, is the 3.75, so that would be 0 0.0375. And then monthly, then we would need to divide by 12. And I'm going to use slash because if that does not come out nice and pretty, it's going to be better to just put the whole thing in the formula instead of like typing it into my calculator. And if it came out nice and neatly, but instead of taking a chance, I can just type that in. And then how many payments is he going to pay? Well, 20 years times 12. So now, in this case, 240, like that's a nice exact number. I can kind of do that in my head personally. But, you know, I don't, that's not too much of a stretch for me. Um, so when we, in the spreadsheet, when we put this in, we could put it in just like this. Notice that the amount that he's borrowing gets put in as a negative, okay? Okay, so it gets put in as a negative, like he's, because he's borrowing it, all right? So, um, and then there's commas between each part. So the first part is the monthly interest rate. So we could figure it out exactly, or we can just leave 0 .0375 slash for divide 12. Then a comma tells the computer, oh, next they're going to tell me how many monthly payments. And I could either put 240 here, or I can put 20 star 12 and let it figure out that that's 240. When it hits the comma, it knows, okay, you're done telling me about that. 
And then how much are you borrowing is what's at the end. So if we would use the, the calculation later, how would we you use? So there's really not an easy way on a traditional calculator. That's why the spreadsheet. Okay. So I don't know that anyone heard me when I said, look in your folder, and then you might want to go ahead and grab a Chromebook, because we will want one today. We don't necessarily have to have it right this minute. Um, and when you take your third test, I won't ask you, um, I won't ask you to try to go back and forth and use a Chrome, but you will be asked, like, what would the formula look like? Okay. But again, since you have this on your reference page, then that should not be difficult as long as you remember things like change your percent to a decimal and remember that you have to divide by 12 because it's monthly, you know, those kind of little details. So you said the 20 times 12. Right. So but this. You can take that out and just put 240. Yes. So I could put this and put 0 0.0375 slash 12 comma 240 comma negative 92720. And both of those are going to give me the same thing. So if I can quickly, like if I know off the top of my head and I'm absolutely certain, then I'm probably just, personally, I'm probably just going to put 240 there. Okay. Um, but, and if this were like 6% divided by 12, and I could just make it 0 .005, I might just do that. But if it's something that's like I don't know off the top of my head, or the decimals, I don't want to be rounding. I want to include as much accuracy as possible. So that's what this allows me to do, is if I just put this here, and then the comma tells me I'm moving on to the next, to the answer to that next question, how many payments. So this is just giving us more information probably that I just told you. Does he only pay that payment 20 times? So you'd have to figure out the, the 20 times, I mean, 20 years times 12. 20 times 12, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So, and I can do that on my calculator. I could also I could write a formula to do that. So I could come over here and say equal and then say hey take whatever is in A1 and multiply it times 20 times 12. Ooh, mine this came out a little bit different than it did when I did it on my calculator. Mine came out, I think, did, you guys, did anyone else get 93520 if you do it on your, on your actual calculator? So here's, here's what can happen. Like if I try to put that here, because this probably was not exact, right? It might have been 0 0.73489.78, whatever. Well, I'm just getting, just explaining to you why you might not want to use this. Because what it's done is if there's extra decimal places that we don't see, it's really keeping them, right? But if this is my payment every month, I really want to use exactly 549.73. So I don't know if I typed it in wrong when I typed it, but someone just try on your calculate on your hand calculator 54973 times 240. 131,935 dollars and 26. Yes. Okay, so this apparently has been it's uh, $5 it, yeah, it's been because of rounding but we would wrap, but like in real life, we would not be ever paying a half a penny, right? But when I keep typing here, this would come out 131935.2. That's what yours came out? Yeah. Oh, I don't know what I did differently then. So what did I do? 
Did you type in 549.73 or did you type, did you use A1? Mine shows up as zero. Are you kidding me? Because <laughs> mine shows up exactly what you have up there. Yeah. So. <laughs> hmm. So I have to. I, I would have to investigate to see why we're. I know why the difference is. The difference is that that payment is slightly rounded, mm -hmm. and so what mine is showing me is if sometimes it got rounded down, right? So. Um, but you're not going to be doing this in the spreadsheet anyway. You would be doing it, and it would be more accurate to get the 131,935,20 because if that's your monthly payment, that is what you're going to pay 240 times. Exactly. We're not sometimes paying a half a penny that we don't see or something like that. But just know that rounding over the course of all those payments, like, yeah, after 30 years, we get something that gives us a slightly different answer. So keep your spreadsheet open because we'll do some other payments, but we'll just use our spreadsheet to find the payment. So your 549.73 times 240 because that's the number of payments gave us $131,935.20. So how much interest is Roger paying over the life of the mortgage? But how, how much money in interest? No. Just here minus he borrowed the ten hundred some thousand. How much did he borrow he though? Nine two seven two zero. Right. Right. So we don't want to subtract the hundred thousand dollars or the hundred and fourteen thousand or whatever it was. So this was the amount he borrowed. So if this is the total of his payments and this is how much he borrowed, the difference between those two would be the interest. So how much is he paying in interest then? Good. $39,215.20. So what is the ratio of Ro what Roger pays in interest to the total mortgage amount, the total mortgage payment, total as in the top number there. So his interest, this would be this one, all the interest to this one. When you subtract it, you didn't get that same thing? Okay, so we okay, so we agreed we were going to use the thirty-five twenty because our payments would stay the same, even though that's not what's in our spreadsheet. Yep. So then, yeah. So a good way for this ratio, remember, this would be a part to whole, right? So this is a part of the whole. So remember, when we have part to whole, we can write a percent. So let's figure out what percentage of his total payments are going to interest. 30%. So yeah, I had like 29.7%, so approximately 30% to the nearest whole percent would be 30% of his payments go to interest. 30% of his total payments. 
Initially, early in the loan, a higher percentage is going into interest. And then by the end, it's a smaller percentage. But of the total payments, 30% of his total payments are going to interest. So how does that look then? Like, how, how do we know what the percentage is early on then? Well, you would have to find out, like, for his first payment, we're going to do that in a table and just, like, at the bottom of this page, actually. Yep. So, each payment is interest and principal, but only the principal part takes down the balance of the loan. So, if he borrowed it for only one month, how much would his interest be for that one month at that percentage? So, how could we find, this is like, if he meant like treat it like kind of like the finance charge for the credit card. So you take the ninety-two that we borrowed and multiply by the thirty percent. Nope. So we're saying if it was just one, so we're gonna do. So it would be ninety-two thousand seven twenty times point zero three seven five. I thought it was thirty percent. No, because it's one month. So the th the. Th well, I thought we were going off the percent. We just figured out. No, the 30% is saying 30% of his payments overall go to interest, not 30% of what he borrowed. So if we were, this is going back to, this is going to allow us to work through how much of his first payment actually goes to interest. So if he borrowed that, and then when we multiply it, and good job on remembering to divide by 12, because he doesn't really get charged 3.75% every month. That's the annual percentage rate. And I came up with here 289.75. Anybody else? That's what I do. Good. Always makes me happy when I, you guys confirm my... So at the bottom of your page, that can go where it says monthly interest. So if his monthly payment, remember his monthly payment is five forty nine seventy three, right? We already we're still talking about that same loan. And if of that monthly payment, we just figured out the for that one month for the full ninety two seven twenty. His interest is two eighty nine seventy five. So if I subtract those, then I find out that two fifty nine ninety eight is how much of his payment is going actually to decreasing his mortgage balance. That's going towards the principal. That's paying down the loan. So even at just a rough estimate, we can see that that 289.75, well, this is about 550, right? Half of 550 would be 275. So it's more than 50%. More than 50% of his first payment. We could divide it to find out the percent, but more than 50% of his first payment is just going to pay interest. It's not going to pay down the loan. So then we're going to use this. We're going to use the table at the bottom like what we've done before. So what will his loan balance be to start month two? So then if we take our 92,720, subtract, not the whole 549, because a lot of that just went to interest, Subtract the 259.98. Anyone else get the same? Two cents. So the next month is his interest going to be the same $289.75? No, because the mortgage is increasing. Okay, so no. 
because the principal, the mortgaged amount, right, that is decreasing. Uh, stop that. It's just a weird word because you don't really, you don't really, mort, gauge, mortgage, well, I, mean, I don't know. It seems like, like, it seems like there's an extra letter in there. It's like plumbing. It's, it's like plumbing. You don't say no. plumbing. No, I don't. You're right. So, because the mortgage has been decreased. So, it's still going to be a lot, right? So, when we said 30% of his payments, we meant 30% of his total. It's not 30% every month. At the beginning, it's a much higher percent. And then each time, as we get closer to the end, because we owe less money, the interest is less. So more of the money is going toward the principal. So you're still paying the same percent. But you're still you're still paying the same payment amount because there's a like very complicated formula. That's why we use a spreadsheet to find out what that payment amount would be so that we can pay the same all the time. So is it meaning if we buy the house, consider we uh, borrow for ten years. So if we sell in the house on the second year. So which means the first year we just we we you that to the to the bank. So yes, yeah, so if you sell a house right away, mm -hmm. particularly like I mentioned, like closing costs and those kind of things, if you could not put very much down, that first year right. you might find out like I, I paid twenty thousand dollars in payments this year, but my principal only went down ten thousand. Or so in time, if when people are like right now, sometimes people are actually overpaying for houses because the market is way up. If that comes back down to, if things actually go down some because the market adjusts, and someone tries to sell the house in only like one year. Keep both four hundred thousand, and the, maybe next year maybe only the house maybe only three hundred fifty. Right, and maybe you paid a bunch of money, but you're it did not change much. Um, another thing that they don't really talk about in this is something called private mortgage insurance. If when, yeah, if when you um, buy a house, if you don't have at least 20% down, mm -hmm. then there's something called private mortgage insurance that most lenders will require that you have until you hit the 20% because they don't want to get stuck with your house. So it's like, so that is another thing that gets added on to your payment. Plus you might have taxes and insurance in your payment. So your payment can look like much more than these numbers because they include your homeowner's taxes and your property insurance, those kind of things. Um, so at the beginning, sometimes it's very small that goes towards the principal, yeah. So the larger our um, loan is, so this was only on a loan of 92000 The larger our loan is, the more that's going to be the way. So, yeah. Um, a car, because cars don't appreciate, cars depreciate. Like, it's not the market. It's just that's what happens. You buy a new car, you drive away. It's not a new car anymore. It's about 20% that first year. Boom. So if the car cost 30000 and you decide I'm going to sell it in a year, you're going to be lucky to get 24000 out of it, but you will have not paid much off because of how the interest works. So we call that being upside down. When you hear someone say they're, they were upside down on their loan, it means they actually owed more than, typically it's a car, more than the car was worth. Like if he had to turn the car, I mean the, the car into the theater and also he had to take out some from his own bucket to ask them to just take the car. Yeah. So then it's like, I can't afford this payment anymore. Well, so like you can't, yeah, you owe more. Um, or um, it happened to me that I wrecked a car and um, what the insurance said the car was worth, I actually still owed more than that. You didn't have gas coverage? No. No. <laughs> it's just upside 
So I was lucky to have basic coverage at that point. I, was, I did have full coverage on that car. So then I ended up, I bought a much cheaper car, and they allowed me to roll what I still owed because I did not have the money. They allowed me to roll what I owed. This was back, I was in finishing college, so I was in a very different place than I am now. But, um, yeah, so then I ended up with, like, a cheaper car, still had more car payment, and was like, something can't happen to this because <laughs> I know that, like, this is not worth this much. So, um, yes, borrowing can be, um, that's also why it's hard to, like, um, buy and sell often because if you buy and sell property often, you will